Today we are on the beautiful map Firian Forest, this time for Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the patch 1.09 version 2.0. It's a nice 2v2 match between 4 really great players. Let's get it started. Alrighty. We have the Dwarven faction at the top right side and the player is Ectelion. His ally is the Blue Isengard player Sauron at the top left side. They are against the White Man of the West player Casper. And his ally at the bottom right side is the Orange Elven player EOL Scorpion. This is the beautiful map Firian Forest and on my channel we don't have too many 2v2 games and I wanted to change this. Please let me know in the comment section down below guys if you want to see more 2v2s and if you also want to see more BFME 2 in the future. BFME 2 is uh, the vanilla game of Rise of the Witch King and it was having a huge update a couple of weeks ago, the patch 1.09 version 2.0, which is including many many changes but also many many improvements about the graphics but also the animations of the heroes and hopefully we're gonna be able to see a couple of these in this game. Two Mineshafts Hall of Warriors coming up for the Dwarven player Ectelion. His ally Sauron is building up two furnaces Uruk Pit. Casper is actually going for an economical start by building four farms at the bottom left side. And the Elven player is going for the early barracks after the first Malon tree. That's a human wood if I'm not mistaken from Casper, yeah. I believe, uh, I'm actually confused. Is this the other way around? Let me check. No, it's left versus right, guys. My bad, sorry. <laughs> uh, so it's actually, you know, Scorpion and his ally is Ectelion. They are against Sauron and Casper. So I was assuming that it's top against bottom, but no, no, no. It's, you know, left against right. So we have Barax coming up into, this, into the archery range at the same time. Of course, they can afford that because he was building four farms first. Sauron is getting some units on the field. His choice is going to be those Urukai. And as Gimli would like to say, this is no rubble of mindless orcs. These are Uruka. <laughs> He's putting water on the Slorian warriors, what a memer. And I need to mention that in BFME 2, the farms, they are not as tanky as in Rise of the Witch King. They have only 2000 HP. Malon trees are even less tanky. They have only 1040 HP. On the other side, mineshafts are quite tanky. They have 2700 HP. And the furnaces are also very squishy. They have only 1080. So they are slightly tankier than the Malone trees, but that's pretty much it. Okay, now we have soldiers and also the barracks is different. In the barracks of BFME 2, you are able to purchase a banner carry upgrade, which you need if you want to be able to use the shield wall formation. In Rise of the Witch King, you can do that also without the banners. Urukai on the field now, and they are looking nice. We are also using the HD edition, by the way, guys, for this BFME 2 game. Alright, so Foresight has been used and in BFME 2 you will see many many players picking up the, you know, Human Wood or uh, Foresight or Creebane, Cave Bands, Eye of Sauron just to be able to scout. Because unlike in Rise of the Witch King, you are not able to see the open infection in the loading screen if you was picking random. Random is unrevealed in BFME 2. Okay, there is a Malone Tree coming up for the Alvin player. Looks like he was losing this Malone Tree next to the barracks. Also, this one has been taken down. Warchant has been used on these Urukai. The build has to be careful. Important to mention is the fact that Warchan is not as strong in BFME 2 as it is in Rise of the Witch King because in BFME 2 it gives you only damage, experience and movement speed. In Rise of the Witch King, however, you are getting 50% damage instead of 40, but also you are getting 50% more armor which is of course way more effective than this one in BFME 2. The mineshaft here is going to be taken down, we have a lot of soldiers on the field by the way from Casper. He is trying to protect his ally and uh, Ectelion is trying to kill the fortress from Sauron, that's pretty nice. Furnaces are getting destroyed in a couple of seconds, those guardians are hitting like an absolute track. They have also charge attack with level 2 which is also different in compared to Rise of the Witch King. And let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to make a video about the differences between BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King. We have some Elven warriors, they're gonna be used to deal with the Urukai to keep this mineshafts protected and once again mineshafts are I believe the tankiest resource buildings in the game in Battle for Middle Earth 2. Foresight has been used, Foresight by the way gives you not only range but also uh, I mean not only vision control but also gives you increased range which is pretty nice. Alright so I mean it's a back and forth game let me check the power points and command points the problem with the command points is they can be changed in literally 5 seconds because the farms are quite squishy. We have Lourdes on the field now from the Isengard player Sauron. As the first hero, if I'm not mistaken, I don't see any other heroes on the field just yet. The farm has been taken down. He's pinging his ally. 
uh, to help him because Ectelion is stealing the creep. <laughs> Alright. Lourdes is gonna draw this sword, but he needs to be level 2 to be able to use Carnage. Carnage is different here. You, it only gives you 100% damage, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. The money, one of the one part of the money is gonna be secured by the Isengard player. All the other money was secured by the Dwarven player Ectelion. Uh, by the way, the Man of the West player is also Honor's player in this 2v2 match. We have some Guardians on the field. We have some Lorian Archers on the field. The fight continues. And the pressure is real. I mean, this game feels a lot faster, actually, than Rise of the Witch King. Because anything can happen and you need to be always paying attention. Because one push can make you lose, like, six farms in ten seconds, pretty much. There was a rallying call now from Ectelion, the Dwarven player. They have a mass massive force. They have Guardians. But beautiful trample is coming from those Gondor Knights of the Man of the West player, Casper. Lourdes is level 2. Hey, thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel. Appreciate that so much. By the way, guys, we are also streaming on Twitch. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. If you want to catch me live, the link is in the description down below. I would love to meet you also in the live streams. Okay. So, Human Mood was used. Human Mood is also different. First of all, Man of the West doesn't have a land in Rise of the Witch King, right? So, that's very unique for BFME 2. And Human Mood is only, only going to give you 35% increased armor. That's it. Uh, while in Rise of the Witch King, Tainted Land and also Elvin Wood gives you always 50% damage and 50% armor. Foresight has actually quite low cooldown. It was used just again. If a small fight going on around this side, Urukai they should not be able to destroy this mineshaft. Extroverts on the field, archers from his ally are also helping out the Dwarven player Ectelion. Pretty nicely. 10 power points collected now for the Man of the West player Casper. He's gonna go for the Hobbit summon. Sauron has only two, almost three power points collected. He's very behind. He's now building up the work pit for the work riders because work packs don't exist in BFME 2. Scorpion has 500 command points collected. He's building a well for the sustain. Fire works from the Hobbits. They are committing against the Baraks. Baraks is not as tanky as in BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King. Trust me on that one. The Baraks are going down one by one. We have also Ectelian being on five power points after a rebuild. And the rallying call. And also very important to mention that Man of the West does not have rebuild unlike in Rise of the Witch King. The only faction that has rebuild in BFME 2 is Dwarves. Lords is level 4. Level 5 is going to be needed for the leadership. And the entire leadership is an entire video for its own. Because this... Oh! <laughs> the slap... <laughs> the slam shot and knocking down Lords to the next map. And Gloin is angry but Lords is faster. He should be easily able to outrun him. He is almost gone but not close enough. The fight continues around this side well for the sustain from the Man of the West player Casper. The Warping heroes are tanky, especially against those Gonda Arches, they don't deal too much damage to them. And this one is level 6 by the way, and that's one of the other differences between BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King. In BFME 2, the normal units, every unit pretty much, is able to level up from level 1 until level 10. Got Crippled down from Lourdes with the Cripple with level 4. But he can't really engage on this fight because he's still quite low and Carnage is on cooldown, but look at the tankiness of Gloin, do you see that? He's fine. He's absolutely fine. Trust me. 750 command points now for Ectelion. Heal has been used. Many extra words on the field. There is a mineshaft he can always use to bring reinforcements or to escape if necessary. We have also Hydeer joining the battlefields now from the Elven player EOL, EOL Scorpion. So two heroes and Gloin doesn't care. He's level 4 now. Shake Foundation is available. Shake Foundation can be used to one-shot every single building around this side. Maybe the farm is going to be his choice. Lourdes is back to full HP. Does he have Carnage? Looks like he doesn't want to use it. The statue is going to be taken now. We have Warcriders Riders on the field now from Sauron. They are looking for a trample. Gondo is sending some more Tower Guards and Soldiers. That's a slap ability. Also called Slam. Similar like in Rise of the Witch King. But the abilities are looking much different. Tom Bombadil summon will be used now. <clears throat> Sorry. This is from the Man of the West player Casper. And also Tom Bombadil gives you leadership here. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King. Lourdes is almost level 5, that's gonna unlock his leadership. We have 750 command points available for the Man of the West player, Tom Bombadil is quite tanky. On the other side, uh, Sauron, the Isengard player, has 500 command points collected only. Warg Pit, Uruk Pit, and 7 power points collected after the War Chant. On the other side, uh, Scorpion, the Alvin player, has 500 command points collected as well. He has Foresight, Heal, and almost 3 power points collected on top of that. The Fortress is tanky, I mean Tom Bombadil is strong, but not that strong. On the other side, Ectalian, the Dwarven player, has uh, revealed Rallying Coal, Heal, and almost 9 power points collected. Here's some um, Archer Range level 1, all of Warriors level 1, and that's it. 
That's it. Okay, I mean, uh, a lot of pressure on the Elven player. He will definitely need the help from his ally. Uh, Ectalian has his army in the middle of the map. They are destroying those furnaces from the Isengard player Sauron, but he will need to send some reinforcements to his ally. Actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, Hyder is doing a nice job. And also many, many archers on the field. They will be able to force the opponent players to retreat. Hyder is now. Let me check his level. Level 4. He has leadership unlocked. Unlike in Rise of Twitch King, leadership here will be unlocked with level 4 and not level 5. Warwin Riches is going to be used now from Ectelion on this mineshaft right there. That's going to increase your resource income by three and two three hundred fifty percent. Not by, very important. That's a huge difference. So Hydir is doing a nice work. He has also the Golden Arrow, but he needs to be level ten, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. And I know you will say in the comment section down below, guys, Shanks, please focus on the video. Don't compare BFME to and Rise of the Witch King. But you know there might be a chance in which you are watching BFME two for the first time. You have been watching maybe Rise of the Witch King only and I want you to understand the differences between these two games a bit. 650 command points are available for Ectelion. There's also King Dane on the field now. King Dane is a great spot if hero and here he is also able to get mounted on his battle wagon. I like that. On his goat. <laughs> okay. And he's not dealing too much damage. He's also very low. He has to be careful. No ranger transition. He's sticking up to Gondor soldiers, tower guards and Gondor archers but rangers could be nice later on because they're gonna be of course stronger. The pressure is real. And uh, this mineshaft is gonna be protected, I'm assuming. That's gonna be close. Now it's gonna be taken down. Oh, never mind. One more hit was needed, but Sauron will potentially micro around. Yes, he will. And this mineshaft is gonna be taken down. Level 2 now for the king of the dwarves, King Dane. That's a human wood, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's a human wood. Uh, and 12, almost 13 power points collected for the elven player Scorpion. Uh, but he has to rebuild now the barracks, the stable, has to eventually get more heroes on the field. But for now, they are not weak at all. They have leadership from King Dean. King Dean offers you high tier leadership, which is the best leadership in the game. While Hydra, I believe, is offering you damage leadership, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Yes, yes. Uh, damage leadership, which increases the damage by 50 and combat experience by 20, 25. Seem like Lourdes. Lourdes also offers you damage leadership. And let, where is King Dean? I want to show you guys King Dean. When I get to see him, of course, there he is. He has the high tier leadership, right? You see that? Gives you less damage, but also gives you armor. And armor is very important, trust me. We have Sauron! Beautiful with our is incoming, but killing nothing. <laughs> These dwarven units, they are tanky with King Dean being around them. And also they were using the porcupine formation, if I'm not mistaken. He actually took almost no damage. Riding call has been used. Sauron has to be careful. He is very low and level 1, he has nothing up. And with our is on cooldown, he can't really approach and too much. I mean, he can do basic attacks, I guess. But you see how strong those pikemen... Holy moly! Alright, Lourdes is crippling down King Dean. What's happening? Fiesta! 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 The Uruk pit is getting bursted down. Saruman is playing literally with fire. He has to be careful. He has to disengage. He's one hit away from getting killed. We have some upgrades going on on the fortress from Sauron. Uh, Sauron the Isengard player. What is this? There's a shake foundation, ladies and gentlemen. That's the power of the dwarven hero Gloin, the daddy of Gimli. We have also Wormtongue on the field. Indeed, the only hero missing now for Isengard is actually Sharku, and that's it. In the meantime, Elven players also gathering an army. Ectelion is not only putting pressure on Isengard, but also he has some units to defend his ally. Man of the West player has to send some help now to his ally. Maybe not, because Warcriders are actually able to clean up. That's a Tom Bombadil summon this time. Uh, but not from the Man of the West player, no, it's from the Elven player Scorpion to spot his ally. And uh, just like in Rise of the Witch King, he's able to knock down the enemy heroes. I feel like Lourdes is going to be taken down. And all the heroes are very low. But looks like Lourdes is going to be barely able to escape. But is Tom Bombadil going to be able to catch him? Oh yeah, it feels a bit faster. Oh my goodness, <laughs> he's dancing around and stuff. The thing about Tom Bombadil though is like he doesn't deal too much damage to heroes. He's just only able to disable them and knock them on the ground all the time. But I think one more hit and yeah, Lourdes has been taken down by no one less and no one else than the mighty Tom Bombadil. We have also Legolas on the field. Look at this, guys. The Prince of the Midwood Elves. A lot of heroes and I like that. I love to see heroes in those games. We have also Boromir, the captain of Gondor, who is always screaming for Gondor, for Gondor. Hopefully, he will make something happen. One of Gondor is available with level 3. 
and he's only level one <laughs> so that's that's pretty much it he has also leadership which is also damage leadership and damage leaderships are not able to stack with each other please keep that in mind oh i like that saruman has this knock up on the heroes too the thing is this clone is so thick like he's so tanky Oh, oh, Visa Blasting! Beautiful Visa Blast! Finally level to unlock. That means Fireball will be available now for the White Wizard of Isengard. Will be used on Gloin. Deals decent amount of damage, but nothing too crazy. Heal is gonna be used from Magdalene to keep his heroes protected. Warm Tongue is very low. He has to be extremely careful. In the meantime, we have a fight going on around this side. Barak's level 3, by the way. Oh, hit him on the field from the stable level 2. Rangers now as well. All the elite units from the Man of the West faction are on the field, but this is gonna be enough. If have the leadership, he's level 5. What is this? It's a summon of the Rangers by the Man of the West player for defensive purposes. The Barracks is tanky, but it's not tanky enough. Once again, the buildings in BFME 2, in compared to the buildings in Rise of Twitch King, are way weaker. And no rebuild available. What is this? There was a rallying call, if I'm not mistaken. I don't... I'm not, you know kind of used to the animations of the BFME 2 just yet. There was a barrage. I was missing that. My bad, guys. Barrage was used. Looks like the Man of the West player will be able to force his opponent to retreat. We have also Elrond on the field now. As a sportive hero, more or less. I mean, don't underestimate him, though. Haldir is running for his life. Elrond has Attilas. And that's gonna give you more sustain to the allied heroes around, uh, around Elrond. Legolas is around this side. He's level 3. If also Gimli on the field to spot his daddy. Saruman is strong, but is he strong enough? He needs to be level 6. Actually, he needs to be level 8 for the Dominate and level 10 for the War of Power, which is better. <laughs> it's better than the Thunderbolt in Rise of the Witch King. Trust me on that one. The Mindshot is going to be taken on. Hopefully, this guy gets level 10 and you will get the chance to see his animations, guys. The animations are beyond standard. Okay, so Gimli is around this side. He has Leap Attack. Once he's level 2, if I'm not mistaken. That was Devastation, guys, right? Devastation, yeah. Devastation is different here, by the way. Stuns every unit in targeted area for a short duration. So, very important. Holy moly, level 4 already. This guy hitting like a truck is Gimli. He's level 4. He's gonna jump on them. Superman jump, but not the best jump in the universe, I guess. But it looks like he will be going back for now, which makes sense. When everything is on cooldown, you don't need to commit. And unlike in Rise of the Witch King, Gimli offers you also leadership in PFME 2. Armor leadership. Armor buff. And once again, armor is very important. Tom Bombadil, Sonic Song, but Tom Bombadil is gonna be taken down as well. King Dane and Gimli side by side. <laughs> Warm Tongue is diving in. Zaplas is almost available in about 5 to 10 seconds. King Dane is level 4. He has the Mighty Rage, which is similar to the Mighty Rage in, in Rise of the Witch King. It's a buff or a debuff. So you can target your own units or target the enemy units. The Watcher is available now for the Isengard player. I'm expecting it to be used around this side. Maybe even to spot his ally against the album player. Let's see. I want to see that. The Watcher is going to come in clutch, I guess. Let's see. I mean, I think he will be forced to use it defensively. I think. In the meantime, what is this? Oh, the Alvin heroes are bullying the Man of the West player. We have Elrond level 4 now. He has also the leadership unlocked. The Watcher is available. I don't want to miss his animation from the Watcher. I think Sauron is going to use it here. Let's see. Is he gonna use it? Is he gonna use it? Okay. It looks like he doesn't wanna use it. Visa Plus, maybe? Visa Plus, maybe? Ooh, the Superman jump. The Visa Plus coming in clutch. A lot of animations happening. Once this guy gets level 5, the Slayer is gonna make him to a Superman. The Watcher is coming in clutch at the bottom side from Sauron, and everything is getting slapped away and washed away from Middle Earth. Just like that. But that means he has no more Watcher available for this big fight. Saruman is level 5, he needs to be level 8, remember, to be able to control the enemy units, but unlike in Rise of the Witch King, this is not permanent, that's only for a period of time. In Rise of the Witch King, he can steal all your units <laughs> permanently when he's level 10. Okay, so the Watcher is gonna be gone, we have Rohirrim Tower Guards on the field, but Elrond and the heroes from the Alvin faction generally are scary. When this guy gets level 10 Golden Arrow, when this, we have also Aragorn on the field with leadership, he's also level 4. Has high key leadership. He has also Blade Master, which is 50% damage and 50% armor, but also he has a passive. Once he reaches level 5, he's gonna have the passive, which is called Anduril Sword. That's gonna make him deal more damage, permanently more damage, and also gonna increase his movement speed permanently by 7%. So the 2v2 match actually turned to be a 1v1 match now. 
Uh, Isengard against Dwarves and Man of the West against Elves. I mean, the Isengard player was literally using his Watcher now for his ally to kill the Alvin army. So he will potentially need some help. He has even Forge Blades on these units. Berserker on the field. Plus four, plus four. Why is he getting money for killing them? Maybe because of Lourdes? Fireball is coming in clutch. Holy guacamole. This armor is shining bright like a diamond. What is happening? Like, a lot of shenanigans happening for sure. I don't know. I can't tell you what it is, but something is literally crazy here. Gimli is <laughs> getting locked down from the cripple. There is no way he can escape the situation and the Gimli is gonna be taken down. But he's a warrior. 1,200 for killing Gimli because of the pillage. That's a lot of cash. Isengard is getting so much money now and 675 for killing King Dane. Holy moly, Isengard get like over 2,000 resources from this fight all alone. The man of the West player, Casper, uh, was using his Hobbit summon to spot his ally. Alright, Lourdes is level 7. We have now really highly leveled heroes. We have also Aragorn being chased down from the Eagle summon of the Elven player. Uh, what is his name again? I always forget the names. EOL Scorpion. Sorry, Scorpion. 11 power points collected, his command points kept, but look how much money he was able to collect. Scorpion has only... Actually, he has 850 command points available and he has even 6 power points collected after the Eagle Summon. That's awesome. Ictalian on the other side has 22 power points collected, holy moly, after the Barrage. On the other side, last but not least, the Man of the West play Casper has 11 power points collected after the Ranger Summon, Cloudbreak, Hobbit Summon, Tom Bombadil Summon, Human Wood and also Heal. No rallying call, by the way. Alright, Tom Bombadil is going to be gone very soon. He's fast. Aragorn is not that fast. He might be able to knock down Aragorn, Aragorn, by the way. But Aragorn is healthy enough. He should be able to get away from this situation. Not a big deal. Oh, oh there comes Gloin. He's almost level 9. Oh my goodness. And the Shatterhammer animation is beyond anything of your imagination. I mean, one thing is for sure. The BFME 2 guys, they know how to make look everything crazily epic. Trust me. So, PowerPoint wise, I don't want to miss his summon Citadel now, okay? That's Ectalian, the Dwarven player at the top right side. The Manchot is level 3. Lourdes has leadership. Saruman is level 6. That's a summon Citadel to knock down the enemy units and actually dealing quite a lot of damage to heroes. They need to be careful now. You can also use the launch, launch the Mighty Catapult, of course. The Alvin heroes are very strong. Legolas is level almost 5. But when the hope for man is over, look at the Gandalf the White animation. It's going down to the sky. Do you see this? This is awesome. But the Shake Foundation, or what, what, what was that? There was a Shatter Hammer animation, ladies and gentlemen. The barracks is gone. But it's surprise. He doesn't even know that it's destroyed because the Shake Foundation is dealing massive damage. Gloin is level 10 already. Gandalf is level 1. He needs to get some levels, trust me. Every hero is leveled, highly leveled, I like that, I like that. We have Berserkers on the field, look, they look like Star Wars, look at their swords, do you see that chat? I mean, not chat, I'm not streaming this one on this on Twitch right now, but I might, and you might be missing this stream, and for that reason, don't miss this stream and follow me on Twitch, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standard. Would love to meet you in there. Alright, the Berserkers are doing not a bad job actually against those heroes, but the heroes are highly leveled now, that's a mighty rage on top of the enemy units to make them weaker. And this, oh Gimli, I mean Lourdes against King Dane. The show match. Draw your sword, Lourdes. Draw your sword. And Lourdes is coming. There is no hope for you to escape this. 765 for killing this hero because of the pillage of Lourdes. That's epic. Holy quackamole. Okay. So 15 power points collected after Ranger. 17, almost 18 power points collected. We gotta keep an eye on Saruman. We gotta keep an eye on Saruman. Ibiza Blast. Boom! Ibiza Blasted once again. He has to just peel back now, he's faster. The Dwarven heroes, they are immobile, but Elven heroes aren't. And they are chasing the Hulk strike from downtown. Hurting this bad boy, Saruman a lot, but not enough to take him out. Alright, Isengard is retreating, which makes sense. He has also the sustain, I think. I believe the Isengard Fortress is able to heal you a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure, though. I want to definitely spend some more time in BFME too just to increase my knowledge about this game and hopefully make a better commentary for you guys in the future. Level 10, Gloin, 
There is a wall hub, there is a furnace coming up, this game isn't over just yet. Trust me on that one. We have Barash available now for Ectelion once again. Gandalf is still only level 1. Aragorn is level 4, side by side. And the good thing about this <laughs> situation is Gandalf is way better in BFME 2 than in Rise of the Witch King because he levels up way faster. He's gonna be level 4 quite fast. And that's what's needed to get him mounted on his Shadow Facts. We have level 7 pikemen, ladies and gentlemen. Level 7. Peregrine Took, what are you doing there? <laughs> run, Peregrine Took. Okay, looks like he's trying to run away. The battle cruiser has to be careful. He's quite low. Uh, but Lourdes was not in the range. But the man of the west is cutting off his way. Level 3 already. In a blink of an eye. I mean, he was level 1 like literally 5 seconds ago. He's level th uh, 3 now. He has access to the lightning sword. The furnaces are getting bullied by this hobbit summon. <sighs> Uh, the light, I mean the Yidi. I mean, let's call this Berserkers the Yidi fighters. Okay, big commitment now. Big commitment now. That's a rallying call. Army with leadership. Boromir, I believe, is level 4 now. Nah, but he needs level 5 for leadership, which is a damage leadership. It's able to stack with the high tier leadership from Aragorn. And Gandalf has no leadership in BFME 2 or in Rise of the Witch King. He does have B uh, leadership in Battle for Middle Earth 1 though. So please keep that in mind. I mean, nobody matching with the Gandalf in BFME 1. Trust me. But basically now he has two fortresses. That's gonna be hard to commit against. He's also buying this... What is this? The animation of the Dragon Strike from the Isengard player Sauron. Look at this animation, dude. I love to see that. He was using Rebuild. What is happening? What is the sun? <laughs> All right. Uh, Gandalf has to be careful, he's still level 3, heal is gonna be used. He has also the shield bubble by using the W key on your keyboard, you can activate your shield bubble, but Gimli is angry. Okay, Gimli is angry and Gandalf, you better run away. But can you outrun Gimli when he's in the rage mode? He's using the shield bubble, that's gonna nullify all the incoming damage for a short, short period of time. But Gimli is on charge, Gimli is on, on the hand, and Gandalf, the Grey Wizard of Middle-earth, might be taken down, but Atelas, Aragorn is saying, don't touch my wizard, lightning sword, and now without Slayer, Aragorn is like, Gimli, I like you, but I like Gandalf even more, and Gimli couldn't manage to take down the wizard, and he has been taken down by himself, by no one less than Aragorn, the King Elessa himself. In the meantime, we have some shenanigans going on here. What is happening? <laughs> Alright, that's a whirlwind. Look at this animation. That, that game is from 2005, 2006, by the way. Keep that please in mind. So we gotta give huge credits to the people who are investing so much time into making this game look crazy and look dope. So BFME 2 animations are definitely next level. And in the meantime, Ectelion, the Dwarven player, is getting out of the game. He's losing every single building around the fortress. He lost even his main fortress. He has only this uh, summon citadel. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Look how many berserkers we have on the field. That's crazy. Warnatong is even level 6. Level 10 is gonna unlock his um, Korod Allegiance, which is gonna give you the chance to target an enemy hero and control him. We have also Midwood Arches on the fields now. They are strong, but this <laughs> Man of the West heroes are also strong. Horn of Kondo? What is the range from this thing? That's crazy from downtown. And now the Wombi Combi. Ladies and gentlemen, boom, be gone to the shadow. See you next game. Legolas is coming. And Legolas and Gimli were grouping because it was elves and dwarves against Man of the West and Isengard. So we have two wizards grouping against the best friends of Middle Earth. And who could be best friends other than Gimli and Legolas? He's chasing down the Grey Wizard, but also Aragorn and Legolas are saying no, 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 no. Oh, actually, they are not. They don't care. Heal has been used. This guy is not fast. Pew! Hawk Strike! And look at this. Even that animation. They, shove, they finally show some love to Gandalf. In Rise of the Witch King, it's a plap. It's an army of the dead summon now from the Man of the West player, Casper, to kill the heroes and the units around. But I believe that might be the last attack. Because, if I'm not mistaken, Ectelion has nothing left. Yeah, he has zero units out of 425 possible command points. And that's it. That's it. The Alvin player, let me check his power points, has 14 power points collected only after the Eagles. That's a fortress coming up from Ectelion next to the fortress from his ally. He is still in the game. He has so much money for whatever reason. The Dragon Strike is on cooldown. Isengard is a crazy force now. 
Forge blades, heavy armor on his Urukai is looking sexy. Alright, level almost 7 Aragon. All of Warriors is getting targeted. We have Sauron level almost 10. And I would love to show you guys the ability of this White Wizard of Isengard once he's reaching level 10. Eagle Summon for defensive purposes. Is the Fortress up? Yes, it is up. So, you know, he won't be defeated. Even after losing this one, he's gonna even use Rebuild. Fiesta. Fiesta is happening. The Eagles are not as strong in as I mean nobody. Oh 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 what is the stones on the on the air? Where is he shooting at? Boom! Actually, it, oh my, okay, maybe I was kind of over exaggerating about it because I was expecting a bit more damage, I gotta be honest. Hey, I missed it, dude! I missed the word of power, guys. For, forgive me, please, guys. Forgive me. I was distracted for a couple of seconds from the launch the mighty catapult from this dwarven summon sitter. My bad. And we won't potentially get the chance to see that anymore because it has a long cooldown. Lords? No, Wormtongue is being targeted by the Eagles, and Eagles, they are not hurting those heroes. In BFME 1, they would be able to kill all the heroes by now. The Watch is available now. Eomea is on the field, the Horse Lord of Rohan. We have also um, Aldir back in the business. He's level 7. Remember, his ability Golden Arrow needs to... He needs to be level 10 to be able to use that. Aragorn is hitting like a truck. He's level 7 and I missed that. Holy moly, I missed to see Man of the West Faction. A Man of the West Faction player who's summoning uh, Aragorn, who's summoning Gandalf. I like that. I really do like that. <laughs> the Builder. The Builders are tanky. By the way, also one of the differences you need to understand is that the Builders are extremely tanky in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which you can kill them quite fast. And also, who's extremely tanky is definitely Gollum. And the reason for that is because the ring heroes in BFME 2 are not Galadriel and uh, Sau- I mean, they are named like that. But to be honest, in my opinion, <laughs> they are more like Melkor and Manwe. You know what I'm saying? Because the one can literally summon two Balrogs, the other one can call three eagles, can use War of Power, heal and everything, like all the shenanigans. They don't feel like ring heroes to me, they feel like, like gods to me of Middle-earth or Mayas. Okay, so, um, you know, of course he was able to survive, but can he actually come back to the game? He has no, nothing on the field, if I'm not mistaken. The flood is available, though. I don't want to miss that. Oh, the flood is coming! Look at the white horses, dude! Let's go! Doesn't deal too, many, too much units. I mean, I mean, too much damage. I mean, not true. He was almost able to burst them down. Would be kind of crazy if he would be able to one-shot them with armor and leadership and buff. But it was looking nice. The animations are next level for sure. Summon Sitter is available. The Barrage is almost up. He's gonna use Summon Sitter. Where is he using it though? He's gonna use it defensively kinda, okay? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should be using that underneath of these units to be able to knock them down. Because they were damaged already as you can see. Maybe this damage would be able to kill them. But it's, it is how it is. Uh, barrage is almost up in about 10 seconds if I'm not mistaken. In the meantime we have 11 power points collected for Casper. The Man of the West player, he has also really strong units slash heroes on the field. We have level 9 Urukai living in Middle-earth on the map Firian Forest. He has also the Lightning Strike upgrade on the Fortress. You know, for the plan B, if ev everything else fa fails and goes wrong. Smart move, I like that. He's gonna put the units next to the well. And that's why I like personally the combination of good and evil combined in one single team, you know? Because the evil factions, they lack of sustain. And with evil, good combination, you can actually be in a good spot. Okay, almost level 8. Aragorn, level 10 is gonna give him the chance to summon the Offbreakers, which is Army of the Dead. Launch the Mighty Catapult is available from this fortress. People will get the chance to see that offense, um, potentially defensively. And uh, Isengard player Sauron as the Watcher, the Vestation, the Heal, that's also very unique to BFME 2, doesn't exist in Rise of the Witch King, Kribin, and Warchant. Prebane is also very strong here, by the way. Uh, because it nullifies not only leadership, but also the buff. Uh, I don't know if the Mighty Catapult has a minimum range. But if it does, it's bad. Because he can't use it. If I oh, the Barrage is coming in Clash. The Blue Fire on the ground, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I love to see. I should be using the bow. Urukai, don't underestimate them. 
Because look at this, they have so much leadership, right? They have, of course, Aragorn's a high tier leadership, they have Lurt's leadership of damage, they have armor, so they are quite tanky, they don't die that fast. They don't, that, that, uh, that's why upgrades in later stages of the game are very nice. We have Glorin back in the business, now hopefully we're gonna get the chance to see the Shatterhammer, Shatterhammer animation in an actual fight. Where is uh, Saruman though? Am I blind? Uh, because he has so many units around, let me zoom in a bit more. Oh, there he is, okay. And yeah, his sword of power is almost back up. The thing is, <laughs> the, the only problem is, he doesn't have much to kill, because it feels like the Alvin faction and the Dwarven faction, they don't have many units on the field cans. But, you know, that doesn't, mat that doesn't matter. If you're gonna still see the animation, I'm pretty sure about that. Look at this tankiness of this Urukai. Look at the damage they are dealing against, against the uh, Dwarven hero Gloin as well. It's a huge army. Huge army. Use the launch to Mighty Catapult. Would be a perfect place to use right there. Would be awesome. You know what is the plan? Uh oh. Is he gonna die to the level 9 Urukai? 1v1? Yes, he is going down. Holy moly. This is no rubble of mindless Oryx, Mr. Klein. These are Urukai. They are hitting like a truck. Trust me on that one. Okay, the Dragon Strike is available. Um, we have the Mighty Catapult, no Eagle Summon, the heroes, they are trying to recover, they are trying to stall level 10 Urukai, how often do we see that? He's not using it. He's not using it, and also, Gloin got killed, okay, wait a second, it's coming, it's coming. Holy moly! That's crazy, am I right? Oh my goodness, the animation. He has the Flatgate expansion for defense, that's not bad. Stay still, I don't know about staying still here. The Flat, the Watcher, the Dragon Strike, everything is looking great. The Flatgate is doing a nice job though. I mean, knocking them on the ground all the time, you know, doesn't kill them of course, but knocking them on the ground is also very effective. I don't want to miss the Dragon Strike now from Sauron. We have already catch it in the first... At the first time, when he was using it around this side. But the, animation are, the animations are next level in this game, I love that. Where are you, Oryx? The full commitment against the Fortresses now. Isengard is focusing on both Fortresses at the same time. He has the damage power and army he needs to do that. And if everything falls and goes... Look at this Legolas, he's level 10. Arrowwind is a arrow volley is available. Arrowwind, sorry, is available. Aragorn is here. He's almost dead. He might be getting killed by Legolas himself. Look at the tankiness of the fortresses. I mean, I was saying, I was assuming that the BFME two buildings are weak, but I think that not doesn't include those fortresses. Aragorn is going to be taken down. They are now fully committing, like pressing Q and against the fortress. That's a mistake. Oof! Look at this dragon, guys. Do you see this dragon? Dragon. Look at this fire animation, that looks dope. And then the turnaround. Oh, Saruman got killed somehow, I feel. Yeah, Saruman has been taken down. The fortress is so tanky. Extremely tanky. And the Alpen player and the Dwarven player are still alive. I cannot believe it. They have lost everything, pretty much. There is a level 10 Urukai doing nothing. Many mineshafts next to each other. Just to be able to increase the command points. And where is Aragorn? Where is, I mean, we, we know that... I mean, where is Gandalf? Aragorn got killed, we know that. Lourdes got killed, I believe, too. Saruman is down. So they actually lost a lot. Many farms next to each other, just to be able to increase the command points at this point. Ectildun has nothing. Look at his money. What is he saving for? Like, he has over 6,000, has zero units. <laughs> Why? Just... Oh! It feels like they left the game now, okay. They left the game. <laughs> Alright, so they were pretty much focusing down and then they were like, okay, I don't know who won, by the way. I don't know, because it was a replay. The replay just ended automatically. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. And let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more BFME uh, 2 videos in the future. I would like to make them. And also cast many, many replays for 1v1 and 2v2. And once again, I want to remind you that this Friday, this Friday, around 7pm GMT plus 1, we're going to have... First of all, the live throw of the World Championship. We're going to be able to see all the players in the brackets. So everyone will know who is in which group. 
And then like, and then after this one, I want to have a one day tournament for BFME 1 on the patch 1.06. And you can simply participate by being around. It's going to be for fun. Nothing too crazy. I wish I want to, I mean, I hope that I will see you around this Friday at 7 p.m. GMT plus one. Again, thanks for watching guys. Take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.